Test, test. Wow, here we are again on the El Gavin show, and it's it's looking pretty good, honestly. I think our feeds are up. I think everything's working. Let me know if there's focus and happiness and goodness in all corners of the feed, because on tonight's live stream, we're going to talk about speaking bad Spanish. We're going to learn to speak some bad Spanish. You're going to learn to speak Gavin Spanish. Gavlish, Spanglish, Simlish. Let's just practice not being quite as terrible at Spanish, but we're going to do that in English, if, if, that, if that makes any sense, so that my English-speaking audience can understand. Entonces, buenas tardes, good day. We are going to talk Spanish. Shout out to all of you in the live stream. I know you've been chatting in there for a few minutes. Steelix and... Uh, Keebler and all you guys, thank you. I am doing pretty well. I've got the chat. I've got the stream. Let me know if everything's sounding good, looking good. We should have a nice upstream all the way up to 1080p for you viewers with the bandwidth over there to stream that live. And I see my wife in there, my Sandra. Hello, lady. Hola, amor. So we're going to talk about it. But you know what? I have videos tonight, and I thought, what a great opportunity because, well, let's just, let's just roll the tape. Let's just, let's just roll the tape and see what we can find because we're going to see, not just talk about Spanish, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how I speak Spanish in the real world after three years in Mexico. All right? Okay, we're going to the river. Bueno, this Hola. is not the Hola to fans. Hola. Donde encontrate. <laughs> wow. Totally did it wrong. That video was supposed to be queued up and perfect, and it wasn't. So let's start from the top, shall we? Pues, sí, todo aquí son muy bueno. Okay, you girls are making me nervous. from Mexico, it's the El Gavin Show. And yes, and yes, that's what we're going to talk about tonight, is speaking Spanglish, Gavlish, let's just call it Gavlish, because my version is, I feel like, a little bit different and here's the deal for those of you watching live i just wanted to kind of get this going for a few minutes before we really started the show all the way and content warning for tonight okay i am a a photographer simeffects.com instagram.com forward slash Gavin Syme, Instagram.com forward slash Syme Effects, and Facebook.com forward slash Syme Effects. That's my job. I make videos, I make photos, like the stuff that we were just looking at. And I talk about that all the time on this channel, even though I have a different channel para mis fotos. Okay? So you probably noticed me mixing in Spanish all the time on this show, and that's a good exercise. We're going to do that a little tonight. I hope you guys will kind of play along in the chat, mix a little Spanish and uh, good to see we got some Bueno Español in there. And see, así es, es muy bonita, bonita. Be bonita is pretty. Beautiful is hermosa. So it's like levels, kind of like we have in English, right? Bonita, hermosa, generally speaking. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. For those of you that are a little prudish, the example videos I'm going to be showing in tonight's show are behind the scenes from my fashion and modeling sessions that I do. So I just want to give you a fair, a fair content warning, because who am I if not to give people their space, right? Everybody has a right to think the way they want, but I just don't want people, everybody always wants to freak out. I mean, like literally, if I don't show 
my wife in every video, the trolls and the busybodies and the gossips are like, oh, what's going on with Gavin? His wife left him. I mean, people are truly amazing. And if you're if you're in that category, you really need to get out of the house and watch YouTube less and like get out in the real world a little bit. However, we're going to talk about some of the Spanish traps that I get myself into, how to avoid those, or probably you're not going to avoid those. And I'm going to be showing you me interacting with people in Spanish, mostly with models on these sessions, because I have a lot of behind the scenes material from these sessions and because it looks good. And so there's going to be like, it's nothing more than you see in your Super Bowl ads or your GoPro ads or at the mall. I mean, but there's going to be like some swimsuits and and some like attractive women, attractive Latina, beautiful Latina models, dare I say, I dare say that. So if that's going to offend you, tune out now, or just turn off the monitor and only listen to me talk. That makes you more comfortable because inevitably there's somebody in here that's busy supporting the police and the government and all the state worship. And then they'll be like, oh, well, Gavin, that's not very Christian to have a pretty woman, to have a bikini, to have a photo, to have a photo session, to take photos, to have models, to do things, to be attractive. Uh, it, it's always like kind of the same story. You guys notice that? Let's get on with the show and just talk about this. Que onda, Gavin? Yes. I'm making videos. That's what we're doing. And we're just going to do this. I'm going to roll the tape again. I'm going to swing back to that video. I actually have like five minutes of video, so I just want to get started. I'm going to do the video, and then I'm going to stop. I thought this would be fun. So this isn't like an activist video where we just have to watch the whole thing. I'm going to roll the tape. Then I'm going to stop, and we're going to talk about the Spanish, how bad the Spanish is. Those of you that are fluent in Spanish, can critique me if you want. Usually the people that are critiquing me the most, I can tell they don't actually have a clue about teaching Spanish. Uh, but that's okay. Hey, as long as you're not trolling too hard in the chat, it's cool. Um, and I appreciate as a, your super chats, our channel backers. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps me coming back and making more shows. Because at the end of the day, I have a lot of work to do and I have to pay bills and buy tacos. So Patreons, channel backers, super chatters, all of that. I appreciate all you guys. And of course, as always, the super chatters, I'll get your comments read live here and, and on the air. And that's not working. So let's go to the video. There it is. Let me see if I got playback control here. We're just going to go right to here. Speaking bad Spanish. I got a little tiny me right down here in the corner. In fact, right near the like, subscribe, and bell icon. So hit that up. All right, and it's going to be a water drinking game. Every time we say Mexico, I drink water. No, not really. I don't know if I can drink that much water. Let's start the video. Now, see, a lot of these, what we're seeing here is me explaining how to pose. Now. I know you guys are going to, some of you are going to get a kick out of this. I'm looking at you, Josh Martinez. I don't know if you're in here tonight, but I know some of my friends get a kick of this. But here's the thing. When you're man enough to stand up to evil and tyranny and to teach models the art of feminine posing, then you can talk to me about being a man. All right? Let's continue. I'm going to play this back, and then you guys in the chat can tell me if you understood what was being said. No, como pasta. Siempre es como... Si, Sounds como a little eso, rough, eso, I know. Eso, eso. behind the scenes. Cuando puedes doblar, doblar. Siempre. Como eso, 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 ladicos. No como un bruja, pero no como eso. Eso, eso. Siempre como... Uh, un poco doblar, un poquito. A mí dar eso, porque... Eso son los traicionos. Es fácil. Cuando... Levante la brazos, guarda la, guarda la, la colas, colos, colos, sí, como, it looks better on the model, no, I admit, eso, I admit sí. it, y también cuando la mejor sistema por cosas, es hacer un cosa, y es better como uno, dos, tres, cinco segundos, segundos, y si la photographer no dice algo, mover, muy, Pero como lento. Eso. 
eso y como se los segundos. Y si me veo algo, me gusta mucho, y si dice espera right. y no me va a dar. Pero, y siempre buscando por cosas por la mano, por ejemplo, vete al pelo, por la plaza, por la falda, algo, porque la, las dos cosas, eso parte es fácil, tu cara, tu cuerpo son bonitos. Y la cosa más complicada en cosas es la piernas y la base, sí. siempre. Sí. Entonces experimentar con eso, en verdad es fácil cuando eres, cuando sabes dónde es todo tu parte, es más y más fácil. Y práctico. Okay. okay, so that is our first little clip of the night. Now, if you go back, if you think about that clip, uh, I don't know how many of you knew what was being said. The point is that she understood me and she's not an English speaker. Now, we'll get to when they speak English, because if they speak English and you speak Spanish and you speak English and they speak Spanish, then the Spanglish really kind of starts to kind of starts to unleash and gets pretty intense. And Spanglish, I mean, I have employees that work with me that are actually like some of my better Spanglish. So I have English speaking employees and I have Spanglish employees. They don't exactly speak English, but they understand a lot. And sometimes the ones that don't fully speak English are better at interpreting my Spanglish than the ones that are fluent in English. So think about that. All right, so we're doing these model sessions, and what we start with, most of these are models with a, not a lot of experience. They're just kind of going out. We're collaborating for fun, for Instagram, things like that, to get great videos, cool behind-the-scenes stuff like this. I like gathering material. This is what I do, is I make content. Get those headphones off there. So what I'm telling her is when it bends, bend it. Cuando doblar, doblar. And it's rough, I know, but I'm, I'm demonstrating visually Right? I'm like, okay, like, be como femenina, como relajante, doblar la dedos, y sí, papi, sí, como eso, ¿no? And we're trying to kind of get that, that nice look, right? And so I'm describing things visually, which can be a great help. It's difficult on the phone when you're not great at Spanish. And my Spanish is getting better. The truth is, most of what I'm saying in there is understandable. Where I'm getting a lot of things wrong is in the conjugations. And hold that thought because we're going to come back to that. The grammar and the conjugations are difficult, but I don't want to get too hung up on those early on. If you're wanting to learn Spanish, and you should be, you can get an app like Duolingo, like Memrise. You can get Rosetta Stone or something like that that's expensive or whatever you're into, right? And you can get these tools. Something on the phone that I can quickly jump in, use for a few minutes, and hop out. Generally speaking, I think that's the best way to go because you can learn new vocabulary. However, I have known people that completed the entire Duolingo tree of Spanish, but in practice, no habla mucho español en la calle. They're not speaking much in the streets. And that's because what you really need, yes, it's great to use an app. Yes, it's great that you can practice whenever you want, but if you want to speak Spanish, you need to get out and you need to go find Spanish speakers. Native speakers, even better. And in the U.S., it's not that hard to do. I know when I was growing up, there was whole towns that were kind of the Spanish culture where the workers and stuff lived. And it always just seemed kind of weird and uncomfortable and, and different there to me because I didn't understand the culture. And so I never felt like I needed to learn. And I should have. I should have. Too much of this thinking this America is great thinking, we need to speak English, I should have loved my neighbor more. As many Mexicanos and Latinos as were in central Washington and learned Spanish so that I could connect with them better, so that I could love them better. That's what I should have done. But I was so raised with the, the, the nationalistic Rush Limbaugh Republican kind of mindset of, this is America, we speak English here. And if we don't speak English, we're going to lose our borders, language, and culture. It, it, it was total BS. We're a nation founded on being a melting pot in many languages. And sure, it's logical to have a primary language, I suppose. But had I learned Spanish when I was young, my life the past three years would have been a lot easier. I appreciate it. Chaos Adventures for four tacos coming right in there in 
the super chat. Okay, I'm just kind of browsing over. I'm not going to do a lot of Q&A right now unless it's specifically about Spanglish, Spanish, speaking Spanish on the streets. Uh, this isn't really a Q&A. We did that last night on last night's show. So different shows, we're going to do kind of different things. Let's go back to our video, though because it's more interesting than looking at me. And let's just, let's just look at some more Spanish situations. And you guys ask me some questions. And if you don't understand something, which you probably won't, but if you think it's important, then it's cool. Just ask. I don't want this show to go too long. Let's try and keep this right about 30 minutos. 30, 30 minutos. Approxima, okay? Approximately 30 minutes. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to video one here and just play back. Here we are doing some more photo sessions. I used all these because I just got a ton of material and I'm talking and I'm explaining things and I'm having to push myself. This has actually been a great exercise. Not only in my photos, but in hey, Spanish. Mira. Mira. Look. Que super. Que bueno. See, que super. Let's talk about that just a little bit. Que super. K is like how or what. K is actually what, but it's used like que bueno is like, oh, how good, right? Que good. Even though if you if somebody says like, hey, and you say que, you're like saying what? But if you're saying que and then you're following it with something like bueno, bonita, like que hermosa, que mamacita. It's like, oh, que baby, que sexy, yeah? So those are things to think about. Que, but super is an English word, right? You're going to find that in Spanish, and this is actually great because a lot of words cross over. First of all, there's a lot of words like the C-I-O-N words that are almost the same. All the C-I-O-N words, or should I say in English, the T-I-O-N, como, uh, como is like like, like information in English, como información in Spanish. The T is changed to a C, but the sound is more or less the same. Sure, it's accented different, but if you say information, to a Mexicano, to a Spanish speaker, they're gonna be like, oh, that, they're gonna know that word. So I just gave you like a thousand words that you essentially already know. And there are a lot of words that cross over because remember, Spanish is a Latin language and English is kind of Latin and Germanic. English has a lot of French words in it. Uh, so there's this crossover that's really gonna help you guys with your Spanglish. And you'll see K super, like that's a mix. It's mixing words that are commonly used okay, right? Okay. Mexicanos always are going to know what OK means. So there's a lot of phrases and expressions that we use in English that they recognize here. Uh, sexy is an English word, but they know what it means. All right? <laughs> it's cool drain. And then just explore. Of, and I'm just using a little hair light. I've, I've shot in both directions, but we have a lot more natural light here. Look at her. Que hermosa. Okay, see, we're, we're talking English. I'm switching back and forth in real time. Now, when I'm addressing them, if I know they don't speak much English, I'm obviously going to be speaking Spanish as best I can so they understand. But with some people, with some friends or employees or models or whatever, I already know, I already know that they know a lot of English. There's a lot of people, especially the girls, because there are English classes in all the schools here. They're just really, really bad English classes. And they're just focusing on like useless grammar concepts most of the time. So most of the students in Mexico that learn English, it's because they actually took an interest and they wanted to learn it. Uh, but that said, there's a, a lot of people, especially the, the, the women, especially the girls, I think they're a little more studious. They might be really shy to speak it, but a lot of times they will understand what you're saying. Switching back here. In la pizza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> now let's rewind that. This is after the session. Sandra and the model and I were grabbing some food. In la pizza. <laughs> oh, yeah. They put, they put, this is an atrocity, but they put ketchup on their pizza. Like I could do a whole show complaining about this. But I'm not going to. All right. Let's. So let's just let's just focus here. All right. So this is me teasing her. They're putting ketchup on the pizza, and you're going to hear a lot of expressions that are going to take some time to learn. Like when she says "oh yeah," and like I don't even I know what that means because it's like "oh stop," but it's it's not translating directly as a word. I've actually started to learn what sounds they make mean uh, that are you know like. Because oi is like, hey. So oi is like, hey, right? Because I'm picking on her pizza. But there's a lot of words like this too. And so being able to read people, 
is a very good skill when you're learning Spanish because if you can read their body language, I'm pretty good with body language from all my activism. I've studied body language. I've watched the cops with their fingers on their on their twitchy guns ready to shoot me. And so like body language and people's expressions and whether they're angry or happy or teasing. Um, and I'm assuming most of us have some of this skill, but just watch for those things. <laughs> Oh, it's good, it's good. Put your ketchup on, ruin the pizza. Okay, we're going to the river. English? Hola. Hola, Spanish. Diola to fans. Donde encontrate. See, did you hear that? Fans, right? Diola, say hello to your fans. So. That's kind of a loan word. Fans is a word they know. But sometimes if I truly am just rolling and I need to say something and I don't know the Spanish word, I'll just say it in English and hope that, and if they don't get it, we can stop and figure it out. But probably half the time, either they know the word enough to know what I'm saying in context or it crosses over enough and it's actually kind of similar. Now, when I say that, I'm saying, I'm not saying you can just talk sentences that way and expect that a non-English speaker will understand you. I'm saying, I can throw a word in and then translate later if I need to. Bueno. So I'm just keeping things moving. <laughs> keeping the light from blowing away. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, here's more posing school. Welcome to posing school, people. Okay, watch those legs. Doblar. Watch out for. For these, Co codos, elbows, this, ugly, this, sexy. All right, get it? You rolling with that? Okay, just out doing that thing. Out there. Look, girls, I'm making a video. Look this way. in. I told you. See? Yeah. Very good. A little more, keep going. Yep. Watch that elbow. Okay, more more classes. Now, there's two things that I've learned about dealing with these people. First of all, first of all, they find my Spanish quite amusing, especially the younger women and girls and the chicas. They think my Spanish is just hilarious. I, I could, I'll walk into a store sometimes and start talking and like the 12, 15 year old girls that work there will just start giggling and like chittering to each other right in front of me. And I've just learned to get used to it. It's just like, okay, whatever. It's probably my baby blues right here, guys. Yeah. No, it's, it's that my, my Spanish sounds tonto. It sounds dumb. It sounds silly. And that's life. Get past this idea that it's going to be perfect and that you need to study your app until you really got your Spanish down. Because your Spanish will never be good until you slog through the mud of sounding like an idiot. And I still sound like an idiot a lot of times. There are those that say that I sound like an idiot in English, too. I beg to differ on that, but I'm working on it, okay? Uh, it is cringe the way you say Mexico. And people cringe the way I say Mexico because they don't know how to pronounce Mexico because they say Mexico, and that's wrong. So if you want to say it right, you say Mexico, or you say some variant of that. Yes, I know, I have a, a pretty thick accent. And just, just do what works, right? But if you're saying Mexico, they will understand, and nobody's going to be offended, but you don't pronounce the XX in Spanish. It's an an H-ish sound. So it's like, if you really want to drag it out, it's like Mexico. And if you actually go to a proper Spanish app or a, a Spanish dictionary and you type in Mexico and you have it play it back, it's going to say Mexico because that's how it's pronounced. And literally for three years, people that don't know how to speak Spanish, but that think that I'm worse at Spanish have been telling me I'm saying it wrong. And, and I'm not, although I probably am saying it with an accent. <laughs> That's a little bit intense at times, but not so much anymore. Mexico, 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 Mexico. Uh, bear in mind, Mexico is full of different accents. And so sometimes when I'm talking to you guys, I say Mexico. But if I'm talking to the Mexicanos, I'm going to say Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. All right? That's how you say it. Now, uh, the ruled R's. We're going to talk about those like uh, perro, 
Pair. I wasn't bad. I, I the roll R's are are so hard for me because I can roll my tongue all day long. Pero, right? I could do like some crazy radio announcer voice because I have no problem doing that stutter with my tongue. The problem with a rolled R is it's like that that two R's makes that sound. My wife Saunders actually way better at this than me because I have a hard time only doing it twice. So I either go pero, 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 which is pero's dog. Pera is female dog, which is also the same as the equivalent word in English. So be careful who you call that. Perro. 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 The, the rolled R's I kind of suck at. I'm actually doing okay with them tonight, probably because my tongue is limber from talking. And it can be difficult. It can be difficult. So let's go back to our video for the day because we've got a couple more minutes of video. So we're teaching posing again. We're teaching posing again. Teach posing. No, it's come on. <laughs> Now, I know they look at me like, they find this really amusing, me posing, my accent, my posing. You can see by the look on their face that they think I'm crazy, and, and they find it entertaining. But that's good. It lightens the mood. Lightens the mood. Always with poses. Keep in mind all the parts of your body. So, like, with the hands. Eso no. No rigid, no straight. All right. Bueno. Okay, ultra base, don't do encontrate. Where do we find you? <laughs> See, they laugh. They laugh at my accent. In Instagram? <laughs> okay, so what are we learning? Tell me what we're learning today. We're learning Spanglish. We're learning that it's not about, I think that's the real message of this video. Use the words you know. Don't think they're going to speak English because they're probably not. So the people that look like a-holes when they come down here are the people that run around talking really loud in English, uh, and they'll be like, hola, do you speak English? I need somebody to speak English, right? So you like open like you're speaking English because all you, Spanish, because all you actually say is hola because you're not actually trying to learn Spanish. And then, and, and they already see us as loud, the way that, that gringos talk and Europeans, I would say maybe to a degree in general, but gringos, for sure, are kind of aggressive and loud, and their voices are loud. We're not very soft. And so if we get agitated, it's even worse. So I try, you know, especially if I'm doing, like, an activist situation down here, to really con control the timbre of my voice and stuff, because they see us, our, our language is a little more aggressive, and I think they see us as so much more harsh and aggressive. Um, so let's see. And I'm watching for your comments for anything relevant to the discussion here uh, that's not just Q&A. We want to stay focused on learning the Spanish tuxedo. I appreciate it. Spanish is understandable and better than a year ago. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I honestly get compliments from the, the Mexicanos all the time on my Spanish, but they're being nice. I know they can understand me and that makes them happy that I'm trying. They know it's it's bad. And I think, Hawk, you have a point like... Uh, um, trying is respect. Now, in the U.S., this doesn't always work because we have an a-hole culture in the U.S. and we've been drilled in so much that, oh, if you don't speak English, you're not American, when most of the people in the U.S. don't even know that Mexico is America. And and I I remember myself because of this borders, language, and culture BS that was being promoted in like the mid-2000s after 9-11 and all the nationalism that was being promoted and speak English, America, bro, do you speak it? And so I remember being hostile once or twice with people in workplaces speaking Spanish. And now I just feel like an idiot. I'm like, what was wrong with me? Like now that I know what it is to not be a nationalist, to not be a state worshiper, and to not be, to not be, to know how hard it is to speak a language. So actually they're way more welcoming and respectful about this down here, I find. And if you try to speak Spanish, you can always supplement with this. Two apps I always keep handy are Google Translate, which does require your internet connection. Well, there's an offline mode that works sometimes. And Spanish Dict. That doesn't need an internet connection at all. So I use Google Translate for complete phrases and sentences and translating, and you can talk into it, and you can point it at signs, and it'll translate. Very useful if you come into Mexico and you know nothing. It's going to be essential for you. Spanish Dict is where you look up individual words. And frankly, Google Translate gets it wrong a lot. Okay, It doesn't understand context that well. Sometimes it gets it wrong um, really bad. So just be aware of that. 
And if they know you're using Translate, they're usually going to be kind of open to that. But the more they expect you to speak Spanish, as your Spanish gets better, the more they just assume that you know it. And so you do got to be careful because words are complicated. Words are complicated. Um, in, in English, we say, I love you. And you might, that could mean, bro, I love you. It could mean, I love you. I want to marry you. It could mean, I love you. You're cool. There's, and it's like one thing, and it can be so confusing. Imagine trying to learn English, right? But in Spanish, all those are separated, right? Um, for example, if you come down here and you're dealing with girls and the girls like, mean cantas, right? That means like, I like you. You're cool. You enchant me. So that's a good thing. And then above that would be like, te quiero. Te quiero is, I love you. And if you enter te quiero or me encantas into Google Translate, it's just going to translate it as, I love you. It's translating it as the same thing to us in English, but it's very different. Te quiero, you might say to your brother, to your mom. Uh, then you have te amo. That's, that's, that's more profound, right? So you could say te amo to your family, but te amo if you say to like your girlfriend is, I love you, I love you. Like, it's the big one, right? Whereas te quiero is like, I really, I really like you, like you. And then me encantes is like, you enchant me, I like you. So all these complicate complications, there's a lot of things. When you get into teasing people or uh, making jokes or personal matters, these kind of things suddenly become way more complicated than they sound right now, which isn't to say worry about it. The first thing is just communicate, communicate. And as you get better and better, you're going to start to realize, oh, these words can sometimes get me in trouble if I use them the wrong way. Hot outside is caliente, right? But if you say, if I say, eres caliente, I'm saying she's horny. You're horny, right? So caliente for a person is like, I'm hot. Oh, yeah. Caliente. Okay, that's caliente if like somebody's saying it about themselves or about someone else. But if you're talking about the food or the temperature, caliente is just means heat, which is also calor. Okay? Necesito calor. I need, to be, I need warmth. I need heat. La comida no es caliente. The food isn't hot. Ella es caliente. She is horny. Okay, so these are like, we laugh at these things, but you, I, I get into trouble all the time. I remember one time going to a grocery store my first year here, and I was like asking the 13-year-old girl that worked there for dates, like the fruit, detils. But they're not that common here. And if I searched up, dates in the dictionary it just translated as cita or fecha so when i was talking to this girl who was trying to help me the way it actually came out is i was asking her for a date like to go out with me now to be fair i don't suppose it would be that rare in mexico for a 35 year old man to ask a 14 year old out however that's not what i was trying to do at all and I think she figured it out. Like, I think she knew that I wasn't like, that I was just a tonto and probably was laughing with her friends later. But the word date, detil, but it, it wasn't easy to find the word in Spanish because it kept trying to translate it as fecha, fecha de nacimiento, birth date, for example. Fecha is date, like on the calendar. Cita is date, like an appointment, like a date with your girl, a date with, with Sandra. Voy por un cita con Sandra. Okay? So there is a lot of variables. Let's go back to our video just for a minute so you don't get bored because I want to wrap this up soon. And we'll finish up our video. Caballo. Hair. Sometimes I'm listening to them and they're talking fast and organically and I'm only understanding half the words, but I'm, I'm bringing it into context, right? Let's see what she said about her hair. Okay, so we're gonna come in here, right here. See, I'm talking about hair already. Where? Here? 
So I'm getting, even if I don't immediately recognize the words, sometimes somebody will say something and I won't recognize the words for five, till five minutes later. But I'll still have understood more or less what's happening. It's real. Now this, this is the girl, Ivana speaks a lot of English, so I'll talk to her in English a lot of times. probably slippery. And in Spanish, because she doesn't speak English super confidently, but she understands it a lot. And if she wanted to, Como she on could. the waterfall. See, Spanglish. I'll try to be fast. Like on the waterfall. All right, so there we are, doing all these sessions. That's, that's what it's all about. That's what we've been doing. That's what I've been doing. That's the work I've been doing, okay? So, did, did we cover it? I'm just going to preview the chat here. And, yeah, just like, uh, you know... You're gonna, they're gonna laugh a lot. Papi, in English, we might, you know, be like, oh, it's my papi, it's my dad. But papi is like very, like, is very sexual. So they're like, if you're like, well, what about papi? And they're like, no, if you call your friends, I, my brother-in-law was working with some um, Spanish speakers and he would be practicing Spanish. And he was like, what's up, papi? And they're like, whoa, bro, bro, you don't call us papi. Because papi is like, What's the best way to... Let me see if I can describe Pappy visually for you because sometimes that's easier. It's, it's like, see, Pappy, see. <sighs> yeah, that's Pappy. Okay? So just, you know, little things to think about. A lot of times, context, almost all the time, context, body language, visuals, these will help you a lot, and it will help them a lot, even if you kind of got some sucky Spanish, like gavglish, and you're throwing in some English words, and all that kind of stuff. A lot of times you can figure out what each other is saying. Sometimes I'll just tell them, más lento, más lento, more slow, más despacio, por favor. Uh, y I could say, they could say something really fast. I'm like, como? It's like, can you repeat that? What was that? I don't, I don't understand. There's a lot of ways to say that. And you can pick out, you can find different ways to say, you know, can you slow down? Can you repeat that? Can, you could say, okay, like, what did you say? But that can sometimes be taken a little bit aggressively, usually from a gringo. They think we're crazy aggressive anyhow, so it's going to be fine. But these are all things to think about. And as you go, here's the problem. As you go through a learning app, it's going to be teaching you words and learning new words is important. So an app can be good to build your vocabulary and then you can go out and use those new words. The problem is you can have completed the app and you're going to get out on the streets and the filler words and the slang are going to throw you for an absolute loop, kick you in the balls and send you reeling down to the bottom of the grease pit in the taco stand because they're going to be like, and they're going to be like rattling away like this and expecting that you're going to know. And once they, if, if they're paying attention also, sometimes you'll say, ah, más lento, por favor, mi español es poco pobre. Perdón, mi español es feo. Uh, otra vez, repite, por favor. Repite, right? Repeat. So there's, again, a lot of words. That's not a loan word. That's just a word that's very similar. So you're going to learn this stuff on the streets. And whether you're in Mexico or the U.S. or Colombia or whatever, get out on the streets. And if you're trying to learn Spanish, go find people speaking Spanish. Even better, once you start getting a little bit better, once you start getting just enough to order tacos, go to places where they don't speak English at all. Start buying tacos at that taco stand. And they're going to respect the fact, especially if you're in the U.S.A., you go to some taco stand and you're like some white gringo dude, and you're like trying to speak Spanish, they're going to appreciate that. They're going to make you a good taco, right? They're going to appreciate that. So what else? Looking through, um, looking through all of this stuff. Uh, como, como eso, like this. This is how I'm looking through it. Yo veo como eso. And I'm just, I'm about to close this out. I think we've covered it. I've showed you guys the video. I hope you guys got some ideas and also some ideas about, you know, yes, get an app, but yes, go practice. Yes, do it last year, not next year. Do it now. Don't wait till you have to escape the USA. Even if you don't feel you have to escape and you want to visit down here, you're going to get screwed over so much less if you go to a tourist town and you speak Spanish and you start to understand because people can't relate to you if you don't speak their language. And it makes it really hard. And so they're always going to use that against us. 
Um, Spanish is usually spoken very fast. Look for keywords and start there. It's important to note that descriptive words often come first, Pablo says. And yeah, and, I'll, and they also kind of reverse the order of things. So I'm trying to think of a good example of this, but um, where we say in this order, they tend to put the other words first. It's a, it's a pronoun drop language. So they use the conjugations mostly instead. And things like tense and conjugations can be really confusing. And those can get you in trouble. Those are just simple filler words. But the difference between saying you are and I am in the context of a phrase is completely different, right? And to you, it may sound almost identical. Mierno is fear. Mierda is shit. It took me like two years before I could really even separate the two. And they just thought that hilarious. I would be like, they're the same way. Lo mismo. And they're like, no, no, así es. All right, so you got to understand like how much of a difference these little things, mierda, mierdo. And I'm probably, my accent is still rough on those, but I'm to the point now where I can understand them and they know what I'm saying. So what does it all mean? A lot of words that they'll use, there's words that in one context are completely an insult and in another context, you're rude or just aggressive. In another context, you're friendly. I mean, guay. Guay is like, bro, guay, guay. But if you look up the list of things they actually use guay for as a slang word, it's like this long, guys. It's like guay for real. It's way out there. It's, it's way out there. All right? I would say my biggest tip for Spanish is don't stress about it. Learn some Spanish, learn some basics, keep the dictionary on your phone. So if you're completely lost, you can always pull out your translate in your dictionary. And another thing I do is I hear words or I'm trying to say words. I will stop in mid conversation and be like, espera, wait a second, espera, un momento, a ver. I'm looking, right? And I'll just look up the word. And sometimes if I can't say that word, I'll just show it to them. When I first came here and I saw the word estacionamiento, which is parking, I'm like, and then I heard the word bicicleta, which is bicycle. Even though there's a similarity, I simply, my mouth could not form the word bicicleta. Don't ask me bicicleta, tonto. I just couldn't say it. I would be like, bicicleta? I mean, I just couldn't say it. But you practice it and it gets easier. And if it's wrong, don't worry about it. If you walk up and you're like, ah, see, si, mi bicicleta, they're going to be like, and then they're going to see like, oh, he's talking about his bike. Like it's a, he's talking about his bike. He has a bike, right? He wants his flat tire fixed, whatever. Force yourself to use the words as close as you can get to them and practice, practice, practice. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be an a-hole about it. Don't, don't be acting like they need to speak English to you. Speak your best Spanish. Now, if you're dealing with a cop, you see me do this all the time. That's a different matter. If somebody's harassing me, I'll be like, ah, you need to speak English, bro. Like you, you do not have to speak Spanish to a cop. I'll catch flack by be like, wow, you're in this country. You have to speak their language. Uh, no, I do not have to speak Spanish when a legal matter is concerned or when I'm being harassed. They're actually required to provide a translator in that case. So don't get too hung up on that. In fact, it'll work to your advantage most of the time if you refuse to speak Spanish when a policeman is trying to take advantage of you. Uh, Spanish in Spain is different yes in fact a lot of apps like memorize or something you can choose to learn mexico spanish or spain spanish now a spaniard comes to mexico and has no problem speaking spanish and vice versa but they have different accents so i would say it's probably the equivalent of uh england english and u.s english is kind of the level of difference between spain spanish and mexico spanish but you have colombia spanish you have i mean every and even and then you have sub accents within the countries when i visited colombia my Spanish was still pretty poor then, so I struggled, but it was actually harder for me to understand the Spanish there because it, it was distinctly different, even though a lot of the words, even though the words were the same, the way they were used was not always the same. Okay? Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm just looking over your chats. You couldn't say bicicleta because you hadn't heard it spoken of. That's probably true, but like there's certain words like the rolled R. We don't have the rolled R. So for me, I still struggle with the rolled R. Perro. I'm doing okay with it tonight. But when I need it, it just sucks. Usually they still understand, but sometimes I have to say it two or three times if I don't get that rolled R right. 
particularly if I'm using a rolled R word that also has, for, 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 for ejemplo, for example, I'm, I'm speaking Spanglish here, okay, guys? Pero is but. Pero no, but no, pero no, no quiero eso. But no, I don't, I don't want that, okay? Pero is dog, okay? The O on the end is masculine, so it's a male dog. Perra is bitch, a female dog, or an insult for a woman. Be careful with that one. And do not insult people's mothers. If it's, an, it's, a, if it's a profanity with madre in it, you probably should stay away from it until you really know the culture, or just stay away from the profanities altogether. Um, what else? What else? The difference in those words, pero, perro. And so if, if there's a similar, if there's not a similar word, you're probably going to get by just fine because they're going to know the relationship. They're, they're, they're not, their mind isn't going to go to another word. But if, if you don't say it right and it's really similar, they might be like, what is he saying? He's ta try you're trying to talk about a dog, but you're saying but, as in but no. There's a lot of words like that. And for example, the O and the A, this is important. You say, the O is masculine, generally speaking, in a lot of words, but not always. So only when it is, right? And O is, is like me as well. So, yo quiero, I want. Quieres, do you want? So you don't, it's a pronoun drop language. And what that means is, if I point to this water, and I, I don't have to say, do you, want, do you want water? Do you want? I want. Do you want? I don't have to say, do you or I. It's all rolled into one word. Now, you can use words like to, which is you, or yo, which is me, yo quiero. But, but if I'm saying, do you want this, I don't need to say, tu quieres because I'm being redundant. Now, if I say that, which I do all the time because I get it wrong, they'll still understand me. But tu quieres is like, do you want tu quieres? You, do you want this? So it's, it's redundant because quieres is them. It's do you. Quieres agua? Do you want water? Quiero agua. I want water. So there's a lot of words, and those the way those conjugations work actually are more consistent than in English. These rules are more consistent than in English. So when you start to learn that the I is feminine normally, the O is masculine normally, right? You start to learn that the O often refers to me, uh, and the E sound often refers to them or you. It does get easier, but you will get yourself into trouble. And, and because the problem with words like that is it's, if you know Spanish, it's easy. But if you're saying, uh, quiero esta, and you're pointing to something, asking them a question, they're going to be like, why is he asking me? If he wants it, why doesn't he take it, right? So it might take, it, it might be difficult for them to figure it out because you're telling them, do you want that? When maybe you're trying to say, I want that. And I've seen their faces get confused about this all the time because to them, the difference is huge. And to us, it sounds almost the same, okay? Uh, all right, tenses, all this kind of stuff is complicated. I don't know if I could explain it to you if I wanted to, and there's no point if you're new at Spanish worrying about it too much. When you need to know a word and understand the tense, go to your dictionary. Because what I see, and what I see in English classes here, is people putting too much form, too much emphasis on grammar and form. The point of a language is to communicate with someone not to be elegant. Now, it's great to be elegant. In English, I can speak pretty elegantly, I think, most of the time. In Spanish, no. And that's frustrating for me as a public speaker because I feel like an idiot when I'm trying to express something profound and they're laughing. <laughs> it can be tough, right? But you won't get good at Spanish or any other language by emphasizing those rules first unless you're the kind of person that's just a grammar nut. Right? But if you're a normal person trying to learn a language, and so I see, I'll sometimes help them with their, their English homework in schools down here, and it's just awful. It's virtually useless because they'll be, they'll, be, they'll be sending them home with homework and being like, oh, you need to explain examples of the present perfect tense in English. 
And I'm like, these people can't even carry on a basic conversation over dinner and order food. And you're trying to teach them about grammar concepts that are university level that most of us watching now could not explain in English to friends and native English speakers. And literally they'll have entire homeworks on present perfect. They'll send them, I've literally taken, I have helped someone with an English grammar test. Went through and answered and filled out all the sentences correctly. And I got a score of zero. Because everyone in their school down here, in their public schools, because every question, what they marked as correct was actually not correct English. So the person that put the test together didn't actually know English grammar. And when I did it correctly, it marked it as wrong. That's how bad it is when you emphasize grammar Nazi stuff over communication. Once you can communicate well. I'm starting to get to the point after three years where I start, I'm starting to want to understand more of the nuances of grammar. And by the fifth year, I'll probably start really being into that. And by the tenth year, hopefully I'll be speaking fluently. There's no shortcuts. You're not going to learn Spanish in 24 hours or any other language. And the main thing I've noticed with people wanting to sell you a language course, you start Googling how to learn Spanish and pretty soon you're inundated with ads on Facebook and they're gonna be like, the secret method to learn Spanish in 20, you're not, it's, it's BS. The reason those ads are written that way is because it's a compelling idea that you can learn a language quick. And maybe there's a system that works better for your brain or better for someone else's brain. And sure, if you're going on vacation and you cram on the plane, maybe in three hours, you can learn some basic words like taco, beer, cerveza, vino, wine, things like that. But you cannot be communicative in Spanish in a day, in a week, or in a month unless you have just a natural and very special skill for languages. It's going to have nothing to do with the program, the learning program that you use. Okay, so I've already gone too long, but I think we talked about a lot of good stuff with Spanish. And I'm just going to look over your chats one more time. I want to thank you all for being in here tonight. Uh, it's been fun. And just, just practice. Yeah, watch the body language, watch people's expressions. And just, you know, you can, there's YouTube channels about learning Spanish. There's apps like Memrise is one of my favorites, but you have to pay, I think it's like 20 bucks a year. There's Duolingo, which is free. There's, there's all kinds of things. So just get out there and try. But most of all, as you start picking up a few words, then go and use those words on people that, that speak Spanish. And you're going to, that's when you're really going to learn is when you, when you put it into that and just, Habla más español día a día a día y voy a perfecto. En poco tiempo, como 10 años, no hay problema, amigo. Güey, es fácil, güey. Habla español más y más. Orden tacos, orden cervezas, orden comidas. Habla con tus amigos y dice en la calle, güey, ¿qué pasa? ¿Qué pedo, güey? All right, learn a little slang. You're going to pick up the culture so much more when you start communicating with real people and uh yeah there's some great there's some great youtube channels on this too dreaming spanish there's the spanish guy i forget what his name is there's a lot of great youtube channels so there's a lot of people way more qualified to teach spanish than me i'm just kind of sharing my experiences on today's live show because people ask and i thought well I'm, now that it's easier for me to do quality live streams I'm just going to start building a library of content for you guys that if you need it, you can come back to later that we can watch together, that we can chat together. So that's all. Keep practicing. Keep going. It's okay to understand more than you can speak, but if you understand, you can speak it. Uh, my wife tends to be that way. Sometimes I can speak more than I can understand because maybe I just have a big freaking mouth. I don't know. Um, Monday equals what? Uh, no, Monday is like, hmm, I don't even... the. Don't always, direct translations are not always going to work uh, because if you actually enter Monday in the Spanish dictionary here, Monday, Monday, it's like, it doesn't work. If you try to enter Monday, it's like to skin or to peel, but Monday is used like, uh, like what? What did you say? Can you repeat that? Um, you can also say K, which is directly translated K is what. So that might be a little confusing. You could say K, and it's literally like saying what? 
But you can also say, ah, que hermosa, que rico, how beautiful, how delicious, right? So que is used like how, but como is also used like how. It's contextual. But if you get the wrong one, they're usually still going to understand. So don't worry about that. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being in there. Thanks for you long-term subscribers and, and super chatters and channel backers. If you guys want more like this, uh, consider backing the channel, joining the channel, pitching a few bucks a month. If, 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 if I can buy tacos with the videos, I'm going to be making videos. i got to feed the family, and that's kind of where it's at. So just keep plugging away and keep practicing. Practice your Spanish. Come back and watch more videos with us. Hit that bell button. If you're not hit that bell button so you get notifications when I go live, because I've been doing like three or four live streams a week now that I have the new the new setup here. It's cool. I think you guys can hear good. I think things are coming across pretty nicely. And I appreciate you guys. So love your neighbors, yourself, resist blue ISIS, and stay safe coming in. Watch out for those uh, blue ISIS goons all over the world, those thuggy cops that are going to be out there this New Year's looking to extort you. And be careful because they are very dangerous. I mean, avoid, avoid people that are drunk and angry as well. But most of all, I would say the higher danger by far is, is the cops. So uh, watch out for that. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, and the native language. There's, uh, Spanish is not actually the official language. There's like 50 or plus recognized languages in the Constitution. Uh, a lot of native languages that are very obscure. So there's, there's Mexicanos that don't speak Spanish. Uh, it's not... In the Central Plateau, you don't see a lot of those, but it's not all that rare for people to have uh, a parent or a grandparent that is Spanish is their second language, or it's even their second language. And just, uh, yeah, the language, it's all about practice. It's all about communicating. Communication before perfection. Communication before grammar. Tacos first. To get the taco... You just need basic communication. So get that first, and the rest will come. All right, you guys, have a good night. Peace out. We'll talk to you soon.